John 6, 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him that hath God the Father sealed. This week I've been thinking a lot about food, about what we need, about how we need it to live, and if we don't have it, how it makes us weak and unable to accomplish the things that we would desire to do. This is the same in spiritual life. Spiritual life is that exactly. It is life. It's not an inanimate object that one possesses. It is lively and it requires nourishment to grow and increase. You can't just feed your spirit any old thing and expect it to grow up into Christ and in all things. Our lives here in this world are physical. We require physical sustenance, something that's substantial. You can't be sustained by an idea of food. The life we have now in Christ is spiritual, spiritual life, and therefore it requires actual spiritual food. Just as it's possible to physically feed yourself things that are contrary to good health in the flesh, it's also possible to feed your spirit with another spirit other than the one into which you have been born into Christ. <clears throat> These concepts, comparing the physical with spiritual realities, made me think of this, um, this in this last week. So much effort goes into people's quest for healthy food in the world. So much time and resources are used to provide for this. Many people not only are per particular about what they eat, but how and where they eat, where it was made or grown. Are these organic, pesticide-free vegetables? Is my chicken and beef raised with no growth hormones used, or are they grass-fed? The idea is that anything used that is unnatural will have an adverse effect on the one eating the food. Processed food is anything that has been altered from its natural state. It can be fruit that's been canned and blasted with chemical preservatives to make it last longer. It can be dehydrated fruits or vegetables, canned soda, oils that have been chemically altered to increase their shelf life and enhance their flavor. It's also refined grains. Regardless of how they are used, most of the time these processed foods have been stripped of a large part of their true nutritional content. And likewise, men have altered the truth of the gospel to make it more appealing to men in the flesh. There may be a kernel of truth still left in it, but it has been voided by the overwhelming amount of added things. They have processed and repackaged it in a way that actually appeals to its desires and lust. This junk food gospel may taste and look very good to someone who is seeking to be more comfortable in the world, but it leads to obesity of spirit and eventually spiritual cardiac arrest. Yes, 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 yes. If men take this much care and concern for their physical health and sustenance, yes. how much more should we for our spiritual? Amen. Let's make sure that the word that we are hearing or giving is organic, so to speak, that it's not tainted by any additives, Amen. that what we are ingesting is coming straight from the Father. Without any man-made process programs, without any additives of worldly wisdom or pesticides that contaminate the word. Amen. But how exactly does one identify these corruptions that have entered into the circumstance? As in the case of food, there's often a label um, that identifies its contents and source. The Holy Spirit helps us to discern these things in 1 John 4, 1 through 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it, is it in the world. Let us make sure that we read the labels, brethren. We don't want to be ingesting food that's not from God. And in the spirit, we can't have any cheat days either. We give our lives fully to the gospel every day. And we can't, we can't take just one day off like Brother Aaron was talking about this morning. We need to be alert and sober. Just one cheat meal will open up the door for Satan to come in and corrupt our whole diet and to throw us off the path. So I want to encourage us all today to stay alert. Let not our minds be given to the things that have fillers or additives or just plain junk. And let's keep our minds pure and clean, 
filled with the untouched Word of God, in Christ we will always be satisfied, never regretting, and yet still always be hungry for more. Amen. Thank you, brethren. And Sister Hannah comes up for our song. Amen.